Moments before Gerard was about to go on national TV in the fall of 2009, he found out his beloved parents had been murdered in a home invasion by two teen gang members. He's chronicling his journey to forgive his parents' killers in a new documentary called Forgiving Kane. I think the first question everybody wants to know is, how could you forgive? It was tough, Val. Uh, got the word at the TV studio, uh, drove home, uh, drove to my parents' home, and I'm on the Dan Ryan Expressway, and there was no traffic on the Dan Ryan at 5.30 p.m. on a weekday. This was, this was surreal. So my producer was, was behind me in his car. We were talking to each other on cell phones. We're like, where's the traffic at 5.30? The sun comes up right at 35th Street near Sox Park. Something at that moment told me, Gerard, there's gonna be a crime scene at your parents' home. You didn't there's, know, I didn't know. what was going on. Right, I, I, I said there's gonna be a crime. I, I was told that they were dead. They were the couple found in the forest preserves. But as I'm driving to their house, so you're gonna see a crime scene. There's gonna be yellow and red tape. There's gonna be TV cameras. Your friends are gonna be crying. Something told me at 35th Street in the Dan Ryan Val that I had to let it go. Something at that moment told me to forgive the perpetrators. They that, hadn't, they, they, weren't, they yeah. weren't even caught yet. It took them a week later to catch the perpetrators. But something told me at that moment, you have to let this go. You have to forgive the perpetrators because if you don't, it's going to eat you up inside and it's going to destroy you. And, and, and so that's what, what I did. When I get to my parents' home, the, the vision that I got on 35th Street in Orion was the vision that actually came true. The cameras were there. I forgave the perpetrators. That day? Yes. Two, on the 35th? Before you even got there, yeah, 35th and uh, Orion. Two, two days. This is the power of love. Two days later, the FBI, the Cook County Sheriff's Department, and the Hammond Police Department got 130 tips on who may have killed my parents. Because the whole community, they opened their hearts when they saw I opened my heart. They said somebody had some jewelry the other day that probably didn't belong to them. Somebody was driving the McClendon's green Cadillac. It, the, their Cadillac was in a garage th uh, two blocks away. It shouldn't be there. They started getting bombarded with tips. They used the pings. The perpetrators actually used my mother's cell phone. Mm. And so once the FBI got the pings, they triangulated and they caught the perpetrators. Wow. And oh, in this documentary, do you sit down with the te former teenagers that did no, this? No, no, not yet. Uh, the lawyers and the uh, Department of Corrections, they haven't given me that clearance yet. Uh, but, you know, from day one and to this day, you know, I forgive them. It's, you know, what's just as sad as my parents, two God-fearing, loving people in the community who were killed, what's just as sad is two black males that will be in prison forever. They got 120 year sentences. Uh, you cut that in half, 60 years, they won't get out any earlier than 2071. They were 17 and 18 years old at the time. But Gerard, it's amazing that you've been able to forgive, but just not to take you completely back, but just the brutality and just the fear that your parents must have been, even though they are, were God-loving and God-fearing mm -hmm. and uh, full of faith. I mean, they must have been in so much fear and pain. Does, oh. that, how, does that affect your ability to forgive? We think that one of them may have known my parents, so it probably was easy to gain entry, mm -hmm. you know, but they ransacked the house, took what they wanted. They tied my parents up left, came back, took the Cadillac, and uh, they, they killed my parents. Uh, you know, it's interesting because my brothers we, and I, we talk about how strong my father was. He's a Korean War veteran. Mm -hmm. you know, he used, my dad used to do push-ups with us on his back, so we knew how strong he was. But he became an, an, an elderly man. And I, but you could tell he was fighting off by the police report because my father had numerous gunshot wounds. My mother only had one. Wow. You know. Now, are your brothers able to forgive the way you have? You know, uh, I've talked with them on several occasions, you know, uh, and I try to defer people to speak with them directly, right. you know, uh, okay. but, but, you know, their hearts are warm and their hearts are soft and, and we're just, you know, trying to spread love to the McClendon family and to other families who mm. have lost loved ones to gun violence. Right, tell us how we can see the documentary. So, Forgiving Kane is in production right now. Uh, ForgivingCain.com is the website where we're raising funds for the piece. We will be finishing up production in the winter and we're looking at a PBS air date for the spring. Yeah. And we've interviewed 22 families who've lost a loved one to gun violence, and we're looking at their stories, uh, my story, 
my brother's stories, and we're looking at solutions for curtailing gun violence. Mm. Wow, that's gonna be powerful. Yeah. We're gonna support that. Foundingpain.com. Forgiving, 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 forgiving,